Hey folks, how you doing? Captain Mark, Kid Coach Chiefs Outdoors. Today's episode, Sea Bass, Captain Roy, all banged up charters. Bugsy Moran, and we also have one of uh, my president right now, my fan club right now, Kid Coach Chiefs Outdoors Nation. This is Rob. Rob, how many members you got so far? We got four members. Four members. Is that cool, all of us? Uh, yeah. Hey. All right, you're a complete failure. Get in the car and you're not for your team. Get on your right pad. Double header. Get on your right pad and get to work, all right? Double header. Stay tuned. Sea Bass, all banged up charters. Thanks for watching. How you doing ladies? Mikey Quesate made a moosh. Alright folks, here we are. Those fish were literally jumping on the boat. That's how thick these fish were, these sea bass, alright? But where were we? What's the secret location? What's good about this spot here is nobody knows about it, you know, so... Right? Yep. Is this your secret spot? This is my secret spot. Not Easy. nobody knows I told, anything. I told uh, six other people of the secret spot. <laughs> no, <spots. there's> <laughs> nobody here. Are these guys all registered members of the con? Uh, I, I don't know. There, there has I'm to be a con to out there. I'm assuming that once this video airs, which hopefully will be Tuesday, yeah, gonna somebody's going to say them. I was out there. He's going to maybe. I'm going to contact them because we need a few more members. You know, maybe. <laughs> four of us started, but as you can see. <laughs> They're following. Yeah, yeah. Rob needs help with the con. We're fishing the South Shore of Long Island, North Atlantic. Uh, I'm not going to divulge the spot, but you can see a bunch of boats in the background. They can say, hey, I was there. That's my boat right there. You had the old G-Force out there. Don't know who they are, but gentlemen. They don't. We also had, uh, I think, a yellow Southport. I think it was called Re Reaction. I don't remember. I'll try to put him in the video. And then we also had our friend out in the Grady White. Uh, <laughs> Like a freaking cop again. All right, so. Like, well, you got a five to go ahead. Male white, approximately six foot one, wearing a tube top, Daisy Dukes, and he's northbound on that planet Boulevard. Vermont. <laughs> disregard, disregard, I even said that. All right, basically. Your homicide days are over. I know that. All right. I want to throw one picture up there for the con. Uh, all right, yeah, all right. So put up the picture of me back in the old days, homicide, step aside. <laughs> all right, folks, let me stay focused here. We're out there South Shore. We are fishing a wooden wreck. This wreck is strewn across the sea floor, 300 feet wide, all right, according to divers. Not much of it is left. It's basically all covered in sand, but you'll see from the underwater footage I'll be putting at the uh, in the middle of this video that it's pretty sick, to be honest with you. You're serious? Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> what are the distractions right now that are keeping you from being focused? I don't know, I can't remember. Huh? It's cool, really cool footage. Deep water, we're talking 80, 80 plus feet, 83 feet of water, and the clarity is insane down there, right? So if you're a diver or anything like that, my boys are a bass band of charters, which is next Tuesday's video. Insane video, do not miss it. You talking about crazy? Makes me look like a freaking choir boy, those guys. Try not to get snagged in uh, cable wire and fishing gear and high-low rigs. And you got that, man? Hopefully got shoot a strike Find bass. Right there, that's just a quick excerpt of Bass Bandit next week. That's Killer Kenny and Matt, two complete maniacs. <laughs> I'm going to show you how we catch these guys, what were the techniques we use when we're using high-lows with bait, we're using high-lows with gulp, we're using high-lows, diamond jig and uh, teaser on the top, no bait. This first setup is uh, what I'm using is a high-low with bait on it, all right? Basically, it is, you could do it either a double uni knot from braid to uh, monofilament, 30 pound test is fine. And then you're gonna do a double dropper loop. So a dropper loop will be up, next one will come down maybe 12 inches tops. And at the bottom of that, you're gonna have a, um, just a loop for the sinker. So you can kind of loop on and loop off different weights with different pull of tide. All right, so that's what I'm doing, dropping it down. Just take note of the rod tip, where the rod tip is located. It's down near the wood because I want to be able to swing that rod all the way up and set that hook, okay? If I have the rod tip up here, the only thing I do is move it maybe a couple inches, and that's in 80 feet of water. It's just not going to move that much. With braid, it helps out, but still, you want to have that rod tip down to the water. You feel your bite kind of lift up, say hello, and land those fish, all right? As you can see, these fish are all over the place down there, and they're fighting for those baits. All right, folks, go look at Bugsy's uh, rig right now. Bottom, it's got a, what do you think that's a? It's a, a gold-plated three-ounce diamond jig. Three-ounce diamond jig, hammer jig. And this is a geezer teaser squid. Unbelievable. So he's doing the high-low, just jigging it. He's getting a bigger fish on that. Chubby kid may have to go to the high-low. Yeah. 
Khan shout out this week. I'm doing it right now. Bam, there it is. Got to do the Khan shout out because this is one of my clients right here, Joe. Goes out there. I can't explain how he caught this fish because nobody would ever believe it, but it's a beautiful five point something, five and a little less than five and a half pound fluke. But uh, it was the first drop, first fish. It was pretty cool. We had a good night out there. Went out there and tangled with some bass, some beasts, and uh, sometimes the beast wins. But uh, congratulations to my boy Joe over here for his kind of shout out of the week. All right, so you probably asked yourself, how does Captain Roy know this fish there? He knows fish here. <laughs> Take a look at that. <laughs> There's either one or two fish in there. There might be. I hope we can get a few. All right, folks, this is a good opportunity to show you how I have a uh, double gulp rig. It's the same rig that I use with clams, but I just put two gulp on it. Notice how the fish aren't really reacting too much to it because it's not moving much. Watch my jig really quickly here. The strike comes immediately. These sea bass are relating to action and motion. That's what they're looking at. They want something to move, something to entice them, something to kind of trigger them to bite. So always keep that in mind. That happens a lot with all different species. All right, the high-low fresh clam bait, you don't have to do much work at all. You could just drag that. It literally oozes scent, and these fish are reacting to the, f the smell and the scent of it, and they're going to strike it. You don't even have to move it. You can move it, and you're going to get just as many hookups, but it's not as much of an active bait like it is on the other fish. This sea bass here is not too happy about seeing his lunch leave, so he comes up and says hello. And, uh... All right, guys, I'm going to drop the gulp now down on the sea floor again. It's going to land right on one of the pieces of submerged wreck. But take real particular notice of all the sea bass that are just lying and kind of almost like sleeping in the crevices here. I'm just going to go real slow motion so you get a better look at this. Tell you, if you watch the right side as I pull this gulp up in the water calm, you can see a sea bass come ripping up right after it, but turn off it. But just goes to show you how fast and easy these fish can get to Taxi! <laughs> Hi folks, thanks for watching the Kid Go Cheese Outdoors. I hope this underwater footage kind of enlightens you guys and girls how fish associate them on structure, how to catch them. You can either go high low. These fish are obviously aggressive. When they're feeding, you can't stop them. They're like savage animals going after those baits, especially clam baits. If you're going to do, my personal opinion is if you want to do multiple and you want to get a quantity of fish, go clams, do the high low rig. It's very simple. You can do a barrel, do a drop a loop another drop loop to a loop for your sinker and that's it go out there with a bushel of clams get those clams from l and big tackle right right Roy, where are you getting your big using uh l and l clam the best in town l and l supports our troops all right yeah they did let's matter of fact i'm gonna stop right now we're going on a tour of l and l right oh, it's now nice ah refreshing right Woo. ah beautiful there's your squid strips there's my product right there for the old soldiers and uh Couple trailer loads of Canadian spearing back there. It's all good. Where's that? That's that row, that row, and that row. Oh, so you got a lot of Canadian. stuff, man. Yeah, we got a good pile. We got a good pile of spearing. Good. Thank goodness. Yeah. That's where the winning fish will be caught right there. Mikey from Allen, they taking care of us soldiers, like he does year after year after year, year after, after year. year. Love right? to come visit. He's got to come over and have a cigar. I know. I know. I'm gonna get my beer. No cigars for me. You gotta come. You gotta come. But,
Hey folks, thanks again for watching Kid Coat Cheats Outdoors. Thanks to Captain Roy, all banged up Charlie's. Putting them on the beast right here. Huge sea bass, up to probably three and a half pounds. This thing easy, right? Probably Absolutely. four. Probably four pounds. All right. Unfortunately, Don Kelly couldn't make it. Case of teach.